Welcome back, everybody. Rudy. Alpha Investments. Today, we're going to crack some Throne of Eldraine for my patron, Miss Rachel A. Rachel, again, thank you for being a part of the beautiful 3.69% young ladies that support Mujik the Yugliowing. And today, we're going to be uh, cracking some packs. Hopefully, uh, Rachel doesn't get completely hosed on bad cards. And, of course, we want to see and discuss what's going on with magic. Uh, today's topic of discussion is definitely going to be around the massive amounts of new product, um, the printing of these sets, and a lot of the paranoia and fear. I know we've touched on this in some of the other videos, so we're going to kind of talk about a few of the different categories today as we uh, start off with a boring piper, which is not the greatest start. And uh, yeah, so on the backs of all these, uh, I mean, come on, look at the summer set. Coming out at the same time, ooh, beautiful mountain there. Coming out the same time as Core 2021. I mean, and, and the funny thing is people aren't really upset with the products they're releasing. Everybody's actually kind of happy about the products coming out. Everybody's just frustrated on the dollar amount and the volume of the products. Everyone's just like, slow down. It's okay. Yeah. Ooh, Stone Quill. You know, I'm surprised this card's still holding a couple dollar rare. I really thought for sure that would not be able to hold that three, four dollar rare, but... Maybe time to time this video goes live, maybe it uh, maybe it won't hold that price. You know, we'll see. Escape to the Wilds. But yeah, that's the thing is, you know, and a lot of people have been kind of analyzing and really thinking about how this is going to affect the people who collect or invest in sealed product in the long term. You have kind of one camp of people saying there's so much product, it's all going to be worthless. It's the new sports card bubble. It's going to fall apart like the sports card world did in the 90s. Okay. Everybody else is kind of making a comment saying, well, actually, there's so much product, there's no way most people are going to sit or invest on this much. Boom! Brazen Borrower, everybody. There you go. Um, I think it's still the most... Ex is this the most expensive Mythic in the set? I think that might be the most expensive Mythic in the set. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it's still a $20 plus dollar Mythic, but I could be wrong. Um, I do know, oh, Foil Rare, Osworn, not the greatest, but again, you get multiple Foil Rares nowadays, so it's not that big a deal. Um, I know they announced that was a reprint in the Challenger, in one of the Challenger decks. So, Realm Cloak Giants, not, not the great, I mean, come on. It's never going to be a good Mythic, everybody. Come on, let's not, Melissa, let's not lie to ourselves. So, just laying out there. And here we go, Gilded Goose! Uh, I don't know if Gilded Goose got reprinted. Uh, I hope you need this card, Rachel. I don't know if you need that one or not, but I don't think Gilded Goose got reprinted. I think Brazen Borrower, Fabled Passage, uh, I'm not really sure. Bone Crusher for the, uh, showcase bordering there. By the way, do you guys ever look at that island? It's kind of an interesting, I guess it's technically an island, but it's kind of more like a retention pond. Or like a little lake. I don't know if I would call that an island, but anyways, just saying. But yeah, so we have a lot of people kind of, uh trying to really figure out how the heck do we handle the, the change of all this stuff. How do we really, I, I don't know how this is all really going to unfold because there's no, we have no history of this. And without any true data and understanding of the impact of, you know, reprinting some of the best cards in Throne in a Challenger deck immediately and then pumping out massive products, you know, and wow, a second foil rare. Okay, that's two foil, wow, three mythics, or three mythics, three foils, two of which are actually foil rares, that's kind of unusual. Usually most foils are just common cards, but hey, you know, sometimes you get lucky. And the Outlaw Merriment, I swear we get this flippin' mythic every single throne opening. I'm telling you, the last like 10 box opening videos I did for the patrons, the Outlaws is always one of the mythics, it's just not, it's just... It's the most reliable mythic you can possibly get on a box opening. I don't know why that is. I know that's the tinfoil hats come out and say, well, Rudy, you know, certain mythics are easier to get. They're not all treated equally. Murderous Rider. So this is a great example. This is one of the good rares being reprinted in a uh, Challenger deck. But is it really going to impact the price a lot? And if so, is it only going to impact the price in the regular version? What about the showcase frame? What about the different versions and the variants? Or does, does anybody not care? So that's, like I said, it's a very tricky thing to try to figure out. It, it's very tough to really kind of, I don't know, guess, predict how this stuff's really going to end. I ain't mean, just, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's just very, very difficult. I don't think there's really, 
a clear system or method you can use because, again, we can't backdate this. We can't really use any historical data to really figure this stuff out right now. So, hush money. So, here we are with... Oh, that is past the halfway point in box one. Overall, we got a nice steady box one here. Not too bad at all, everybody. Um, double foil rare. And, hey, nice little mer, folks. Secret Keeper. Nice little showcase common. We got three mythics. Of course, one of them is brazen. Can't really argue with that. We did hit the old Gilded Goose and Murderous Rider. We don't have a Fabled Passage, but overall, really, another Lord of Garenbrig? Isn't that like our second or third one? I mean, come on. So we got a nice solid opening here. I'm going to say this is a slightly above average box, but not anything completely insane home run. Nothing like that. And, um, yeah, I still think uh, Throne is still one of the best engineered creative sets I've seen in a long time. I still stand by that, even after opening so many of these videos and... You know, I, I think what it is, too, is with the new Theros set being such a lackluster follow-up to Throne, I think. Maybe it makes Throne look a little better by comparison. Dragonfire common. Maybe. I, I don't know. But again, you know, a lot of people said, Rudy, if there was no collector's box, I think everybody would be singing a different tune to uh, the new Theros set. Oh, I thought we had a foil once upon a time. I saw the name, and I was like, once and up, 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 um... So, anyways, that's kind of where we're at, everybody. So, um, I did find it interesting that it does... I don't... Is Wizard still going to do, like, a deluxe edition for Theros, like they did with Throne and all these... Are they going to do, like, all these other versions and releases? I don't know if they're going to. They may They may be backing down on some stuff. I know in 2019, we had the... What was that called? The, um, the Mythic Editions. And they... With all the problems and everything. And I know they ended that. And they replaced it with these... Um, I guess collector's boxes, and then I guess the secret layers to kind of go in that direction. I, I, I guess that was considered the replacement. I'm still a little uncertain because of the amount of products. It's a little confusing to really know what is what. So, Ferocity of the Wilds there. Um, can we please have one more Mythic? Sitting at only three, and one, uh, two of those three are not that great. It's a little weak. Sorceress Spyglass, ugh. That has got to be one of my least favorite rares in this particular product, I'm telling you all. Anyways, I want to jump back to kind of the uh, a really interesting conversation here with everybody. And uh, Fairy Guide Mother. Eh. I want to jump back to that conversation about all these printings and sets and how is that really going to age long term. And I still think we're going to see a lot of uh, very strange surprises because I don't think the market's going to be prepared um, to handle all this product, um, and I do think Wizards is actually going to throttle back. They're going to make changes. Wizards always does. They're just slow to... Hey, look at that. Embercleave on the very last pack for Mythic number four. I know people are going to say, yeah, Rudy, it's a, it's a Challenger deck reprint. I, you know, I, I don't know how much the Challenger decks are really going to drop the price of certain Mythics, and it, it's really going to dictate on how how large the printing is on the Challenger decks. I know the very first time compared to the second time, and I think they may be getting the printing a little bit tighter on the supply on these Challenger decks since they have a couple year track record to learn from it. And if that's the case, you know, some of these Mythics that are reprinted, it, it may not have a huge impact on the financial value of a Mythic because they're already so difficult to get. So compared, now, compared to a rare, like something like Fabled Passage, that I think you're going to have a lot more of an impact because, you know, obviously... Whoa, did you see that? That pack is almost opened. Look at that. It's like a machine error. That was, that was almost... You could... Oh, oh, wow, look at that. Yeah, the machine even clipped... Oh, it's just dust. Never mind. So, um, I think there will be certain cards that are actually going to have some impact as far as the um, the value holds because of these Challenger decks and different variants. But I think certain things are going to be able to survive this a lot better than people think. I, I really do. I don't think it's just this end of days negative, you know, all these Throne is worthless, that's the end of Throne of Eldraine, Theros is the next recession. I, I don't think it's really that bad. I really don't. Oh, we're getting a bunch of terrible rares at the beginning here. I just don't think it's, you know, things are never that bad and they're never that good. And I think this is a great example. Because I don't think just one bad set like Theros really represents, oh, Magic's dying, this is the end of Magic, did you see Theros? They're overprinting, it's the baseball card world, blah, blah, blah. Seen it all. And I, I don't think it, I, I just, 
from seeing it all over the years, I, I just don't think it's going to have the long-term impact that a lot of people think. I, I just really don't. Ah, uh, the Acolyte. Even the, even the non-showcase framing on that is still very nice. That artwork is still very well done, even for the non-showcase there. Um, yeah, so just laying that out there, everyone. I really do think we're going to see a lot of surprises, and I don't think people are going to be ready for it. I feel like if you kind of take ourselves back here to the 2016-2017 era of the kind of the bear market of magic there, um, every so many years we have this. Hey, we finally got a nice once upon a time. We didn't get that in the first box, Rachel. At least we finally got one. Um, is that being reprinted also? I, I, I don't know if Once Upon a Time is being reprinted. I'm not really sure. And the castle. That's actually the uh, most expensive one. I think that's the $5 rare. I think that one's held up the best. So I, I don't think... I really just think things are going to be... I'm trying to find a good way to say it. I'm having a hard time kind of trying to say that verbally to make you guys visualize what I'm thinking here. Hey, robber of the Rudy. There he is. Upside down Rudy. Uh, wow, is that really our first mythic? Are you serious? Okay, mythic number one for box two of Throne. Wow, only one mythic in that whole stack of 12 packs? That's kind of flipping weak. Oh my goodness, that's real weak. Another Bone Crusher. All right, I hope you're not into the uh, mythics there, Rachel. I hope you're going for the, the rares like Fabled Passage and Gilded Goose, because man, where's all the mythics, am I right? All right, well, oh, really? All right, fine, Rudy, here's your mythic. Here's a magic mirror. That's the greatest one. Cool artwork, and that's it. Not really that usable. Ridiculous nine-drop casting costs. And hey, Rankle Master of... Man, so many people bought this and speculated on this card at the beginning. It was ridiculous. And never did anything. All right, back there we go. Up to three Mythics. That's that's a lot better. Boy, we just went from a no-Mythic box to three Mythics in a couple packs. That's a lot better. All right. Anyways, but this, is whole, this whole time period of Magic reminds me... Of honestly, the, the whole Amon Ket Hour of Devastation Iconic Masters era, where just things were just very bleak and negative and scary or depressing or concerning and anxiety. And, you know, looking back on that, anybody who really just stayed the course and didn't really let the emotion and the fear drive your decisions, you know, you, you did very well. Honestly, you, you would do very well. But man, it was tough. You would need a strong stomach. To be able to handle what was happening. Because remember, in that time period, the same thing that's happening today was happening then. The prices were just flat to soft to negative. And, oh, I love that artwork. Never gets old. I remember this from the collector's box openings. That Squire showcase frame is just so nice. And I, and I think the people who are able to stomach what's going on right now, I think are going to be able to have the same, if not similar, long-term results. And um, I think they'll probably be rewarded for it. But... Now, I know what people are going to kind of argue against what I just said is by saying, you know, well, Rudy, in 2017, you didn't have massive, massive amounts of product. That's true, but at the same time, during that time period, everybody was complaining about the ridiculous amount of Master products. Remember what we do? Go through like a 13-month period where we had Iconic Masters, Masters 25, then Ultimate Masters. Hey, Gilded Goose, finally. There's a double tap on the Goose. Um, so, I mean, we did go through a period where they were really cranking up those Master products. So if you compare that to today, while we're not having three master sets being printed, we're having a lot of other things which are, you know, they're absorbing similar amounts of money. So I guess what I'm getting at, everyone, is are things really that different? That's really what it comes down to. I mean, honestly, are we really in that much of a different situation? We may not have these ultimate master priced item, but we have a lot more smaller priced items. I think Stolen by the Fae. Is this our first... I think it's our first foil rare in this box, is it? Or our second? Oh, not good at all. Rachel, uh, sorry. Not, just not the greatest. It's just not the greatest right there. Man, we are just, your boxes are average. We're not, I'm not, I'm not giving you a home run here. It just is what it is. We are just not getting, I don't see Oko and his fancy new leaf. We're getting, ah, oh, the talisman. I mean, we got some decent mythics. You got a brazen and a flipping uh, ember cleave on the first box. Box two, though, we got, you know, Mirror, Robbing Rudy, and a prankster. Hush money, and another foil rare. Okay, well, Star Wars Queen. I always liked her outfit. Um, just not, the, we're just not getting that, those really major home run pulls. We're just missing them, man. It just is what it is today. A Lord of Garen. Is that our third Lord of Garen bring in this video? I know in the first box, didn't we get two of those? We may have even had a foil rare in that. Maybe it's more. It might have a play set of those things. 
So, yeah, it is what it is. I can't, can't go on. Hey, Stone Quill Serpent. See, it's okay to get a duplicate if it's actually something decent, but it's frustrating when you get duplicates of cards that are just like 25 cents. It's like it was a bad card, and now it took two of my packs just to get the same card. That's that's historically very frustrating for everybody. It doesn't make for exciting content, and, you know, it doesn't make for a good experience for the patron, and we all get crappy duplicate bad cards, and it's frustrating, so. All right, well, we're getting towards the home stretch here. Uh, Rachel, I... Uh, not the greatest opening. Hey, Grook in the close. Is, is this a pity Grook? I think we just got a pity Grook because he's just like, oh my God. Rudy and Rachel trying to open this thing are getting crushed. Oh my God. No way. Are you flipping kidding me? Foil mythic ember. Oh my God. Wow. What a way to turn it around. Grook, a double mythic pack. In the end of box two, and according to YouTube, almost nobody watches to the end, so no one's even going to see in the fabled passage. Wow. Holy smokes. What an ending. Oh, and a clackety bridge troll, and the patron flies off in the distance on an owl. Wow. Fabled passage, Ember Cleave, and a Garouk at the very end I, oh my God, it has to be like $30, $40 in cards just in the last two packs. That was insane. Okay, well, uh, that's today's video. And just like the conversation I had with you all about the boom and bust, the good times and bad times and magic, that is a great example right here at the very end. That's a great example of how quick things can change. And you have to be careful making those emotional decisions. Because, man, look at, this, look at this video. Look at what, look at what Patreon Rachel just went through. I was like, you know, box two, maybe a five out of ten. And then right in the close, you get a triple hit. I mean, a fabled, an Embercleave, and a... I mean, wow. Okay. That's it. Have a great day, everybody. And as always, thank you very much for being a very kind patron, Rachel. And again, everybody, thanks for watching and allowing me the honor and privilege to entertain everybody.